Hello, everybody. This is DR Mood of Almost Cool. I am here with Mac Jazz. Hello. And it's Warmlord39. Yo. We are continuing our Still Arts playthrough, and I think we're about to hit, we're about, we're about to become a little more awesome. Do you guys agree? I hope so. I know, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, do you guys have any words we want to say before I put, before I unpause? I don't think so. Yeah, I can't think of anything either. That's the one problem. I can never think of anything to say. Unpause it. This is a Wednesday episode, right? Yes. I believe so. Yeah, the last okay. weekend. No, the last the last episode we recorded was Monday. Okay. Lots of p factions to look at. Let's see, I need to double check my factions. <coughs> I have three now. Huh. Let's I see, what one. do they want? I have one that's slowly shrinking. All of them all of them want independence. Yeah, that's what it's gonna be. If they all if, if they if they spawn from a planet you own that you didn't conquer, then they are advocating independence. If they spawn from a planet. Math Jazz, you better tell your Menjeti to behave, otherwise we may have to blow them from space. Hmm. I'd really rather not do that. They're members of my society, but they will <coughs> the want to leave. I can't allow that. They're, it's my planet, mine. Well, I suppose that... If they've decided to leave, then they didn't like it here under my command. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm pretty sure that several of your the several that the Majeti who came to my territory might not have been dissatisfied with you. They just found my, the promises of my empire a little more substantial. Maybe. I mean, I have a Mangetti on my world that's close to perfect. That has a 95% happiness. <coughs> Colony established. Construction complete. Okay, now let's see. I need two more months till I can get another science officer to take over my sh my science ship. Well, the rate at which this faction is growing is shrinking. That's a good thing. Yep. And I should be able to bribe them again, or whatever I need to do for them again sometime soon. Yes, yes, my research finished. Now let's see, I can either remove another tile blocker, <coughs> or, or, or get, or air world, air world. I want the air world. 74 months. Yes, the last tile blocker on Vanna is about to go bye bye. The last tile blocker on Mind Mindara is going bye bye. It's, my my fleet seems to have a pathing issue, jumping the arm. Sometimes it'll say, it it will say that it's like going up, up an arm and then jumping down. It will go up along one arm and jump down. But then it jumps down and starts going up to jump back up an arm and then jump back down an arm. Even mm -hmm. though that definitely takes more time. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Of course not. You can't... Dang it, I, there's a quote I want to say, but it doesn't apply. Say it anyway. An, I, think it's an, I think it's an older saying from like the Middle Ages somewhere. Um, when the castle is at when the castle's under siege, the queen is at sea. 
mean that when that whenever there's trouble, the the, the, the people in charge are never around. I wanted to say it, but I was like, right before I said, it, I was like, no, that doesn't apply here. That's not the exact. That's not the correct. That's not correct. But the meaning is solid. I'd have to pull up my laptop to look it up. I have it written. In I have it typed in there. Okay, I forgot. I can get a new scientist now. Let's see, scientist. Now let's see. I mean, I, I, okay, now let's see. You won't do. <coughs> you would work. Yeah, let's go with you. Thirty-five percent anomaly speed research. Research anomaly speed. Dang. Anomaly research speed. The other two don't really work well for what for a spaceship. I mean, expertise, uh, research speed, new worlds plus ten percent, and research speed computing plus ten percent doesn't really work well for a science ship. So, now start surveying. I've been wanting this system surveyed for a while. Now I can finally do it. Now let's see Hostile what we do now. Oh, you're coming in to clear him out too? Clear what out? Oh, yes, in the Haldus system. Yeah, I was mostly coming in to get some, to, to have a shot at getting the uh, red crystal shard tech. Considering out of the shard techs, it's the best. Hmm. It's the one I don't have. Ruby Crystal Sovereign Delta. I already have my fleet headed over there, depending on how well they survive, I'm just do that next. Hostile fleet. You definitely branched pretty far out, Swarmy. Huh? I fa I just realized that one of the hyperspace windows that uh, thingies that I found. What's it called? A wormhole, sorry, wormhole gates, whatever, that I found. Mm -hmm. 
on the lower ring, the, far, the a little farther out is yours. Just realize that. Never really thought to check who it was, whose it was. Yeah, I've been throwing them down as people's territory has been expanding. Probably a good idea in the long run. Yep. To the point that I don't need them anymore, I'm going to keep throwing them down as far as far as basically our territory goes. Probably a good idea, yeah. You know what movie all of a sudden I really want to watch? What, what movie? Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Oh, yeah. And if you think that one goes, it's kind of insane, you should see the rest of Monty Python's works. I've seen a couple, and I'm just like, holy crap. I like the one where they have all of the accounting firms are like pirates and the oh, buildings oh, that they um, the meaning of life, I believe. Yeah, I think that that's kind of funny. Oh yeah, that was that was funny. I mean, so, Monty Python stuff just tends to be kind of <coughs> all over the place. But I'm thinking after we're done with this record, I'm going to put on Quest for the Holy Grail. That sounds good. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that's right. I can do that, but I don't have enough. Number two. <coughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah! Mark, I'm gonna kill you. One of these days, one of these days, it will just be, the whole recording will be quiet and then we'll be like, hey, what happened to Mark? Yeah, seriously. You know, I'm going to quote Looney Tunes. One of these days, one of these p days, pow, right in the kisser. Uh, that's not the Looney Tunes. That's, uh, oh, what's his name? The Jackie Gleason from The Honeymooners. Oh, then they probably quoted it from that movie, because what I'm thinking of was a Looney Tunes cartoon. <coughs> yeah, most definitely, well, not a movie, TV show, but... Yeah, The Honeymooners was an old TV show that The Flintstones is based off of, except oh. The Flintstones is based, like, The Flintstones is basically The Honeymooners, but in caveman days. Of course. I figured. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they based Fred Flintstone's character off of uh, the character that, okay, I forget. I think Jack Lemmon is the actor and Jackie Gleason is the name of the character, but I might be... I might be mixing up a bunch of stuff there. I might be mixing up two different actors. But, yeah. And then after the Flintstones became popular, Hanna-Barbera decided, you know, uh, we did we did way back in the past. Let's try way out in the future. Did they did, uh, what was it, Jetsons? Yeah, the Jetsons. Oh. Hmm. I've seen a little of the Flintstones. I haven't really seen anything of, of uh, Jetsons. The Jetsons was considered pretty good <laughs> until they introduced the character called the Great Gazoo, which is where people decided that the show was no longer worth watching. Ow. You know, the, a jump the shark type thing. Ooh. Which is a reference to an episode of Happy Days, where the Fonz decides to Jump. go <laughs> water, um, ski over water skiing, and he jumps over a shark pen. Which is funny, because in Arrested Development, the character that played the Fonz plays a lawyer, 
and in one episode they're at the dock and there's a shark that's lying on the dark on the dock and uh the lawyer character um henry wink no is henry Lee winkler the name of the actor i forget anyway the guy that played the fawns is playing an, this lawyer and he jumps over a shark on the do dock and takes a look at it You're like oh uh, just got to jump over the shark here or something he says and uh it's a reference to when he did the fawns ski jumping over the shark in happy days gotta love gotta love references oh there's so many of these tv references i just like, love um, them in, in the more recent in the in going more recent going a lot more recent into the um I think, what's it called it's a tim allen show that he does now um last man standing uh he does a he does a whole lot of references to a lot of the stuff he's done like he's like they actually had him say never give up never surrender that's hilarious they also have a lot of references to his tool time days including including him meeting one of his um children in the show when he's when they're grown up now the, and his wife and the wife in that sh in to, in um home improvement in last man standing uh, yeah and then make keep on making references like I wish I had a son like you. When he was one of his children in that show. That's funny. And I, hey, brother, have they done any um, Buzz Lightyear references? Um, no. Keep talking. Yeah, the yeah. My brother just uh, reminded me that they had a um, Toy Story um, poster up in one of the rooms in a very particular episode, and that the Tim Allen character was staring at it, just going, "Huh." And I'm and like I said, that's just a big one to me because they keep on because the the sheer amount of references they do in that. The show itself is very worth watching, in my opinion. It's just <coughs> the sheer amount. I've just been trying to send a science ship to colonize a planet. Hmm. Dude, I, I was kept about to get drink. Don't make me do that. What? I already have enough stuff coming out of my nose. I don't need. I don't need my drink coming out of my nose too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that you're sick. I thought you were making a joke like "Don't make me destroy you" kind of thing. <laughs> you know, to one of your plant and just something on one to a plant nearby or something. The timing was just—I seriously was just about to take a drink, so. A bad timing. <laughs> I need to go suppress this, uh... Uprising. <coughs> yeah. Bribes leaders wants... And suppress the media wants... So now they're down to 20%, and their chance of increasing support is 3%. Th <coughs> I love the look of the uh, Pulsar star. I have, oh, sorry, I have a, cool. Yeah, because I have <coughs> crystal and elites. So I have three, not crystal and elites. They're just uh, three different crystalline entities. Crystal and elites. I have crystal and elites. You're right. And I'm tr and I'm trying to wipe them out really quick so I can you know move move and about. You only more. find them over pulsers. 
Yeah. I forgot about that, actually. I didn't know that. Yeah, the elites, you only well, find them over pulsars. Just like, oh, you know, I did. I just have just completely spaced. I remember, I remember, um, Swarmy telling me that before. Yep, just like the only hostiles you'll find over black holes are those big groups of void clouds. Uh, void clouds. They can be pretty gnarly, primarily because of their range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who is our next target? Well, at some point, I'm going to finish off the disc. I think I could attack the Yabrak Mandate again. Like, is it is it time that I could do that? Let's see. <coughs> Be careful, they do have a def defensive pack. With whom? With, um, that big red empire. The, uh, Rufari Empire. Rufari. I can't wait to find out what And that's the only is. one, right? Yeah, but that means we'd have to deal with two people if we declare war on them. So we'd have okay. to, uh, it cost twice the work. Oh, um, remember and here's the Rufari Empire. Okay, what about the... Let's see. These people... <coughs> the fanatical purifiers. The right, the guy right in the middle? He's wide open. He's one of the weakest guys in, in the map. Uh, the problem is, is that I can't reach him. Can't? I can't. How? Wait. Yeah, I could, I could reach his capital. It's just that he's got closed borders. Um... And I beat those Krigasil elites. Yeah. Okay, so where do you have your uh, warp, your wormhole? Generators? I might have a, I might have a higher level wormhole tech than you do. You can build another. You can jump across into his territory and then build a wormhole on in his territory. You do. Only if if I'm at war, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think that the best way to do that is to start with the Hebrak. I'll move <coughs> both of my fleets into here. You can still hear me, right? Yep. Yeah, I can still hear you. Okay, for a second I thought I might have did something with my mic. Okay. Oh, goody. Nothing was good at this game, don't worry. Okay, now let's see. Uh... <coughs> Green is society, right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Hey, a new election coming up. <coughs> Holy crap, that's huge. System survey complete. I have found a, a planet with six society research on it. A single planet. Where? Uh... On a planet called Alpha Hydri, Hydri. It's on the lower arm, um, just a little north, uh, just short, of, just a little north uh, east of my um, uh, Mamma system. It's in my system. It's already mine. I'm already adding stuff to it. It's just wow. That's huge. Six. Oh, it's got a little feature called Shadow Play on it. How do you know that? I clicked on the planet. Got a modifier. What's a shadow play? 
Shadow play gives it oh. a plus gives it that plus six society bonus. Someone surveyed it and got an anomaly that gave it shadow play. Ah, uh, probably I, I, it was probably me, and I just don't recall it. Well, it might have been also one of the ne other nearby empires. Very possible, yeah. I am slowly gaining systems from the Zaxoid Unity. Keep going and you'll beat them. <laughs> we'll eventually want to take him out anyway, especially if you're going to be uh, going down, for, especially if you guys are going to be going and getting synthetics at any point. I know I want to. And new ruler. <laughs> Let's take a look. He is <coughs> an orbital researcher, so I need to build four more research stations. Luckily, that's a relatively easy one. Um, I should be getting one. Uh... Let's see. So far I have two lined up. It's been a while since I've had an ocean world to colonize. <laughs> well, I'm terraforming a world into an ocean world, but you get my point. Yeah. Can you terraform a world that you already own? Yeah. Like yeah. that you've already colonized? Yes, but it will cause major unha it will cause major unhappiness for the population. That's my assessment as well. No, okay. I mean I, I mean I haven't actually done it, but I have had a I have go, I have gone and looked this up. It will cause major unhappiness. The entire the population will have a huge negative happiness. <coughs> I mean, come on, you're changing the entire planet's biosphere. And while they're on it, of course, they're not going to be happy. <coughs> Crap. Why? Why does another Mengeti decide to jump onto this, this arid world? Because the Mengeti evidently are tired of the cold. <laughs> sure. So you going, going to war with the fanatical peer virus? Um, probably <coughs> next next episode. Does that mean about that time? Uh, it actually does. Hmm. Oh well. Mm -hmm. 
I am lowering my tax rate. That should make people happy, right? Uh, you mean on the sectors? No. No? It doesn't really affect happiness with the sectors. Oh, it totally has to, because you would when, I, so. when I tax at 75%, <laughs> people get angry at me. But when I drop the taxes, they don't. Or at least not as fast. It has absolutely nothing to do with the tax rate. Well, that's dumb. So I can tax them at whatever rate I want. <coughs> Pretty much. Hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like I have enough research stations queued up so that I should be able to get this, uh, this mandate. And then I'll probably have to shift over to building some more ships so that I can punch through and take a, the Jibonid Royal Holdings. They only have one planet. Yep. It should be easy to knock that out. Yep. Okay. So. And no one is going to get upset with me for taking that, right? Nope. Okay. <coughs> In fact, the Abrak might like me more because of it. <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, um, I think it's time for you to take us out. You got it. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. It was not as it was. It was it was a bit exciting, at least on my end. And you know what? We'll see you all next time. Bye. See ya.